After the initial four video tutorials on the essential functions of the TRIOS intraoral scanner, today I'll demonstrate how to scan a full arch implant case. First, the upper arch, followed by the lower arch. We covered setting up the TRIOS intraoral scanner in our earlier videos, so we'll now focus primarily on scanning techniques for both the upper and lower full arches on implants with some useful tips and tricks. Since our last video, the TRIO software has received a significant update. There are enhanced features, improved graphics, and better integration with other software, notably from major partnerships between 3Shape and leading dental companies. Some settings have also been changed. Let's explore these changes together. First, we'll create a new patient. Here, we'll enter the full arch on implants just to have an indication clearly then you will put the name of the patient that you're treating we need to indicate on trio software that we are going to make a new implant case as you can see the graphics have changed significantly from our prior videos due to the recent update there's a range of tabs now for in-office scans, select Status Scan. For Smile Designs, choose Smile Design. For making new restorations that require the technician to receive our scans, you'd select the respective lab. We continue to value our essential collaboration with the Canale Laboratory, so we chose it from the screenshot. At this point, the software opens the case and we start giving the indications on the case to be made. This right part you see on the screen has remained very similar to the previous software version. So we are going to enter the delivery date. Very important as we've seen for using the reverse workflow technique. Click the pre-preparation and then we're going to scan the provisionals as well. So we're going to have extra windows as far as the digital workflow is concerned. And here clearly we're going to write all our instructions for the clinical case to be sent to the lab. We move to the left side where the prescription setting has changed a little bit. We're going to click on the bridge option because we're doing a full arch. We're going to add the bridge elements, which can be preparation, intermediate inlay only, in this case, we select screw retained restoration. We always choose restorations directly screwed on external hexagonal implant connection. We're going to indicate to the software where. The implants are so where I'm going to screw my restoration on the implant. So in this case, the patient has placed the implants on element 15, on element 13, on element 11, on element 23 and element 24. After that, we're going to indicate intermediate elements position. And then we confirm that we will make a 12 elements full arch. So at this point, we have our full arch of implant directly screwed onto the external hexagon implant connection with 12 elements. We're going to specify the implant connection. So every clinician based on the type of implant the patient have is going to specify the implant connection. These are all implants with external hexagon connection RP. We repeat this for each implant. So, we will determine the type of material that we are going to use for the treatment, depending on the restorations we choose, whether it is a PMMA, 
or whether it is a zirconia or other structures, they will have to be specified. The shade. We always give initial indications as far as the shade is concerned. Later we'll add, as I explained to you in the previous video tutorials, the patient's shade photo here in the part of the prescription where we're going to give the instructions for the case. The scanner software gives us the option to add the clinical photos. We go to save and proceed. We can start proceeding with our scan. After we finish the prescription and enter any clinical images of interest, which the technician can open with the dental system, we go to the next screen and get ready for our impressions, our scans. As you see here, there are a series of windows representing the workflow for the full arch implant scans. And again, as in the simple cases, we will use the reverse workflow technique. As explained in previous video tutorials, we always remember to calibrate the scanner every morning. This is a very important procedure, especially when we are going to do scans on implants and scan abutments are involved. We then start with the antagonist arch, which will be the lower arch, as marked in the first window. The scanning technique is always what we have seen, so we move. We oscillate slightly in the posterior part. In the lingual part, we swing this way back and forth. And then we go back to swing vestibular. And lingually, uh, in the lower arch, we go for scanning more teeth surfaces as possible. When we do scan on implants, especially full arch, It is very important to try to record as much keratinized tissue as possible, which is the stable tissue that doesn't move and that the scanner will recognize much more easily. The tissue that are not stable creates great problems for the scanner. So we also go behind and get the keratinized gingiva that the patient has. We're going lingually and we go to finish our antagonist scan. Okay, well, having finished our scan, we clean up some areas, I mean, do the trimming. If we think we've done too much trimming, we can safely go back with this function cancel. And as you can see, I'm going to retrieve the area that I had mistakenly deleted. As mentioned, we absolutely try to keep all the keratinized tissue we cut out this mobile mucosa. After registering the antagonist arch, the TRIO's workflow window tells us to go and scan the pre-preparation. So our upper provisional, which is the arch on which we're going to have to make our full arch restoration, the master scan. And so we go ahead and scan the upper provisional. We use the usual scanning technique. Here we have long abutments, so it's a little bit more complicated than the basic scans that we've seen. The teeth are very long and there has been a loss of bone support. Very significant. At this point in the upper arch where we have the whole palatine area with the palatine rugae that can be a guide for the scanner. To retrieve the scans, my advice is to record as many palatine areas as possible. Tilt well when you have these balconies clearly related to work on implants. Try to get the scanner going that registers as well as possible underneath. Because later these surfaces will help us when we have to scan the mucosal tunnels. 
Let's go and catch up. Let's be wide all the time. That's why it's very important to try to scan as much keratinized gingiva as possible because after this stage we are going to trim the provisional and so the scanner needs some references. On the upper arch it is relatively easy. Again, we have the palatine rugae. We have a lot of keratinized tissue. On the lower arch it's a little more complex but in short we manage it. Let's go and check. We can probably better scanning this area because here we have so much keratinized tissue that can help us later. Once we are satisfied with our scan of interim restorations, we are going to indicate where the implants are. Because the software already needs to know at the provisional stage where they are. So we mark the 15, the 13, the 11, the 22 and the 24. It doesn't ask us for the elements in between. We mark the areas where the implants are, confirm and move on. The normal flow of the trios would lead us to scan the mucosal tunnel. So we would have to unscrew everything and cut out the temporary and record the mucosal tunnel. But thanks to the reverse workflow technique that I have showed you in the first videos and on which we also published an interesting article with our working group. Involves scanning the bite so that we record what is the occlusion tested with provisionals? What is the vertical dimension? Sending these indications to the laboratory. So let's jump forward to this box and record our bite. We start on the right side. The scanner has already identified the position, but we go ahead and try to record a little bit more to give more indication to the lab. We check what the bike position is. We check if it is correct. We always check in the patient's mouth. Right now the software has perfectly, just by scanning only the right side, recorded the patient's occlusion. So in this case, it may not even be necessary to go and record the bite too. If we see that the patient occlusion recorded is correct, and it is the one our technician will receive, we could stop here and proceed with the detection of the patient's specific motion. I mean, the dynamic occlusion of the... ...patient. As explained earlier, it is very important to instruct the patient on what movements he is going to perform because we are going to record them. We have to make sure that the patient performs them correctly. So spend some time, 10, 15, even 20 minutes if necessary, instructing the patient on what are jaw movements to do. Now we start the scanner. When the scanner recognizes the area already taken for static occlusion, we give the directions to our patient to start. At this time, the scanner no longer recognizes the movements, so we have to stop and go and cancel this scan and start it again. So it is important that the sound of the scanner gives us precise indications of what is going on. This is not a scan of the jaw movements of the patient, so we are going to delete it. Perfect, we're going to start and resume. Good, so we're going to check the patient's dynamics done with the provisionals and if it all matches, we accept it. And at this point, 
we go back. Remember, we have named it reverse workflow just because from the temporaries we're going to record the static and dynamic occlusion and then we go back with the standard workflow. We go back to standard workflow and scan the mucosal tunnel. Clearly we should trim the provisional. Many people make the mistake to scan the mucosal tunnel without trimming the provisional, hoping that the scanner will recognize the new situation over scanning the provisional. But trimming is a very important step in the case of full arch, because as I was saying, we have to scan as much gingiva as possible to allow the scanner to resume and recognize the area already scanned. And then also in this vestibular area, always keep as much keratinized gingiva as possible. Here, I had told you when you scan of the provisional to go in the more internal area and get as much tissue as possible. Just because this tissue will be able to help us a lot during the scan, and so I try to trim. Exclusively the provisional while keeping the gingival tissue. To speed up the trimming steps, once you have trimmed the margins of the provisional and detached the provisional from the arch with the cutout, you simply click on all the patches option. As you see, it deletes the provisional. Here you see in the trimming how I tried to go even a little bit inside where the balconies were because the scanner will recognize this gingiva much easier. I'm going to check if it's still some parts of provisional. Here maybe it needs to be cleaned a little bit more, I would say it's pretty good. So we unscrew the provisional and proceed to scan the mucosal tunnels. Once we unscrew the provisional, we keep it a few seconds there and only remove it when we are ready. This will prevent the tissues from collapsing because as you will see, we will go very fast in scanning the mucosal tunnel and have a very precise record of the provisional tissue conditioning. Let's start with the palatine rugae and you see how quickly it should be recognized. With all this tissue that was being used, it's all very simple. We finished the recording of the mucosal tunnels in a very few seconds, so we definitely did not have a tissue collapse and we definitely correctly detected the provisional conditioning. The software still asks us to go and confirm the placement of the implants. So 15, 13, 11, 22, and 24. Let's proceed with the window with the next workflow that will involve scan abutment scanning. As I explained to you in the previous video, we prefer all metal scan abutments. The choice of scan abutment must be made and carried out clearly based on the type of implant you have placed, but especially in cooperation with the technician who must possess the mathematic files of the scan abutments that we are going to use. Another essential tip in case we have multiple implants present in the same scan is to place the scan abutment faces by diversifying them, so one lingual, one mesial, and one distal. It is to facilitate the scanner to recognize different scan abutment positions. We dry the scan abutments, and you can see what I mentioned. The position of the scan abutment surfaces is vital. This ensures the scanner distinguishes the implant positions and the CAD software can seamlessly superimpose the scan abutment 
with the scan abutment mathematical files. We always go palatal because we have the reference point of the palatine rouget. You hear the noise of the scanner, it's doing well, it's recognizing everything. Very important to record the surfaces of the entire scan abutment. At this point, let's go over how the scan abutments were detected. We zoom in and check. The detection looks very good. Let's remember that then the final check will be done through the CAD software. And the lab tells us precisely if there is a match between the mathematic files and the scan abutment detection. I would say that look like good scans. So at this point, we can go ahead and finish because this was the last scan in our workflow having done the reverse workflow with the static and dynamic occlusion already been scanned with the interim restorations. So we finished with the scan abutment scan and we end up in the dedicated occlusion window. And see the byte position that we recorded with provisionals. But as you see here, they are only in transparency you see they are no longer there. So, the two arches are exactly in the position of the provisional tested and confirmed by the patient. And this is the big advantage of the reverse workflow. If we don't use this technique, but the standard workflow, we would have to use some devices or cut in two parts, the provisional in order to record the patient's occlusion. You can understand how the reverse workflow is a game changer. Once the TRIOS software has finished the post-processing, we have the possibility to have the digital cross-mount of the scans. So, automatically intraoral scanner software gives us the possibility to put apart the provisional scan and choose the mucosal tunnels or the implant scan. And this position where an upper arch seems to be floating in the air is actually the position of the interim restorations. We have recorded the bite scan of the occlusion with the provisionals in situ and this position will be preserved. When we go to remove the temporaries, we have the correct occlusal vertical dimension, static occlusion, and dynamic occlusion. So I see great benefits. To get to these kinds of results, what are the important things in a full arch implant scan? First of all, to have a provisional that has been tested, that has occlusal accuracy and aesthetic characteristics that are very similar to what will be in definitive restorations. So, just as we meticulously manage provisionals in complex cases in analog dentistry, we must do so digitally. This allows us to replicate characteristics and relay them to our labs. That's the first tip. The second is to capture as much keratinized tissue as possible, especially in full arch cases. Stable keratinized gingiva, like palatine rugae, greatly assist the scanner software in resuming scans by aiding in triangulating and recalling previously scanned areas. We then proceed to scan a lower arch. We are still in the provisional scanning stage. Again, you see the important thing here is to record and scan as much keratinized gingiva as possible. Because later in the trimming stages with the reverse workflow technique will make our life much easier. So I'm going to go back and test as much keratinized gingiva.
especially in the anterior area we go. Look how well I tilt the scanner to go and record bulges of provisional and the mucosal tissue well. Let's detail as much as we can because the scan of the provisional is the basis for subsequent scans, so it's very, very important. We check it, proceed to indicate where the implant elements are as the prescription. The trimming in the lower arch is even more important than the upper arch because we have much less keratinized tissue, so we try to keep as much of it as possible. This is a very delicate and important stage. We have to be very accurate. We can safely zoom, as you see, and be even more precise with trimming tool. This is the lower arch, we have trimmed the provisional, as you see we try to keep as much keratinized tissue as possible so that we can then go and take it back in the next scan which is the mucosal tunnel scan. You see how he immediately found the keratinized tissue, the stable gingiva, he triangulated everything and we basically have the scan of the lower arch of the mucosal tunnel completed in a very few seconds. Next step, scan abutment scan. As you can see, we're going pretty fast. These scan abutments are different from the ones we used in the previous case of the upper arch. They're still metal. I recommended metal scan abutment. We clearly did the calibration before starting the scan. The scanner recognizes them quite easily. We check the scan abutment surface. I would say everything is properly recorded, scan abutment properly scanned. At this point, we are ready to proceed to the workflow. So as you can see even the scan of the lower arch, although we have less tissue reference than the upper arch, if done correctly does not give any kind of problem. A practical tip I can give you in case the amount of keratinized gingiva is slightly less and therefore you may have difficulties. In scanning to place in the initial stage some references, for example in the retromolar areas, they can be flow composite references or pen marks. This can also help scanner software in the later stages of scanning to triangulate and resume the scan. Today we looked at scanning techniques for full arch on implants, both the upper arch and the lower arch. We have given some practical tips that I would summarize. The first one is definitely not to start with scans on full arch, on implants the moment we buy the scanner, but to proceed through a learning curve that starts from simple cases, such as study scans, for example, and then to more complex scans. The second piece of advice is to have confidence. I mean, to know very well what is the reverse flow technique, which helps us a lot. Use scan abutment which our dental technicians know and have the mathematic files of. Remember to mange the keratinized tissues. We have seen that is much easier in the upper arch, where we have a very large amount of keratinized gingiva and the palatine rugae are present. I recognize the lower arch is a bit more challenging, but as you've seen, 
it's entirely manageable. My recommendation is to establish references, such as a small amount of flowable resin or composite. It's up to you, or even use a marker that makes small black dots on the keratinized gingiva of the lower arch. And not the last, but perhaps the most important thing, is to have provisionals that have been properly managed, both from a functional and an aesthetic point of view. This helps manage the digital workflow using the reverse workflow. So, in complex cases concerning any prosthetic workflow, whether analog or digital, start with interim restorations that are adequate, and this helps us to get to final restorations effortlessly and straightforwardly. I look forward to seeing you and invite you to keep following us. Our next video tutorial will focus on natural teethful arch. I hope to provide insights and tips to streamline your daily clinical procedures and enhance your use of the intraoral scanner.